Fundamental Resonance, Episode 7, Electromagnetic Field Recordings. Electromagnetic fields are all around you, a hidden infrastructure that supports an overt infrastructure. Cell towers, radio towers, and electrical lines advertise our use of electromagnetic fields. We use electromagnetic energy to communicate, encoding messages and waves, energizing our environment with information and signals that slip past without our notice. At least, when we don't have the right tool to measure or decode it. Electromagnetic fields are a combination of electric and magnetic fields of force. They create their own energy by continuously moving through one another's waves at right angle. They are generated by natural phenomena like the Earth's magnetic field, but also by human activity, mainly the use of electricity. Cell phones, computers, radios, hair dryers, microwave ovens, TVs, anything wireless, and to a lesser extent, anything electrical are all constantly emitting EMF energy into our environment. Atmospheric events produce electromagnetic fields too. Thunder, lightning, and meteors do so in a dramatic fashion, while the energy produced by the ionosphere and the Earth's own magnetic field is more subtle. The electromagnetic spectrum is the way we refer to this range of different types of energy differentiating the parts of the spectrum by the unique characteristics of each type of wave. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays make up the electromagnetic spectrum, with radio being the longest and slowest moving wave, and gamma rays being the fastest and most energetic. The majority of the electromagnetic fields we encounter particularly those used in communication and household electronics, are low frequency and low energy. All electromagnetic energy is a form of light, whether we see it or not, and it passes through our bodies all the time, a neutral force that neither changes or catalyzes action. The only electromagnetic waves that carry enough energy to interact with the human body are ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays. Ultraviolet rays we encounter daily in the form of sunlight. X-rays and gamma rays are found on Earth only in minerals such as uranium and radon. Do these low energy electromagnetic fields that inhabit our daily lives affect us in ways beyond the physical? Perhaps. After all, the electromagnetic spectrum is as much a part of our world as the ground we walk on and the air that we breathe. Why wouldn't it create a subtle influence with its imperceptible background noise? These electromagnetic fields that we encounter in our daily lives, from cell towers or radio stations, our Wi-Fi router, or the tap reader at the coffee shop, are certainly not passive, but they follow predictable patterns based on physics. They are all technically radio waves, invisible light that inhabits the low energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum, below visible light. These waves interact with conductors, are absorbed by certain materials, reflected by others, and are shaped by the environments they pass through and their interactions with other electromagnetic fields. They don't act with purpose but in patterns, simply flowing where they find a conductive path, combining and interfering with each other anywhere electricity and information flows, often in chaotic and overlapping patterns. If you had antennae instead of ears, you could hear it all, this unintended radio errata, this cacophony of modern living. The sounds of electromagnetic energy can also be heard via a wideband radio receiver, which is a radio specifically designed to listen to electromagnetic fields. The device I use to make these electromagnetic field recordings as I travel through Los Angeles is called a Soma Ether, made by Soma Synths. Unlike what you think of when you think of a radio, a wideband radio receiver has no tuner. Radios most people are familiar with work on the principle of exclusion. When you tune into a radio station, you're modifying the circuit in your radio to resonate with the frequency that carries the signal of that station and that station only. The tuner in your radio is designed to allow the chosen frequency through while filtering out all other frequencies. A wideband radio operates on a principle of inclusion as a kind of anti-radio, at least in the way that we think a radio works. A wideband radio has no tuner, 
and the circuit in a wideband radio resonates with any and all electromagnetic frequencies that it encounters. An electromagnetic soundscape is a real-time infrastructural landscape history created by passing through fields of energy with an antenna that can make them audible. These sounds represent raw encounters with electromagnetic fields, communications meant to be received but not yet translated. All of these sounds come from radio waves, just not radio waves we are supposed to hear. These electromagnetic waves are as much a part of the urban infrastructure as streets or buildings. These electromagnetic field recordings are not speculative interpretations of the invisible waves that surround us, but a direct interaction with the ambient energy of our modern landscape.
All of the sounds that you heard in this collage were recorded on a Soma Ether, a wideband radio receiver made by Soma Synth. There are very exciting things happening in the Soma Laboratory. You can visit them online at Soma, S-M-O-A, Synths, S-Y-N-T-H-S, dot com. The field of electromagnetic listening would not exist without the work of Christina Kubisch. Kubisch has spent years exploring how radio energy shapes our environment with the Electrical Walks series, where Walker listeners are taken on specific and curated sound walks with special headphones that can pick up electromagnetic frequencies. Fundamental Resonance is a production of Fulcrum Arts. Written, narrated, composed, and edited by Sam Rowell. Audio mastering by Sean McCann.